but that's in fact what happens with chronic pain, and that's why pain becomes its own disease. Almost as if somebody came into your home and rewired your wall so that the next time you turned on the light switch, the toilet flushed three doors down, or your dishwasher went on, or your computer monitor turned off. That's crazy. We treat these patients in a rather crude fashion at this point in time. We treat them with symptom-modifying drugs, painkillers, which are frankly not very effective for this kind of pain. We take nerves that are noisy and active that should be quiet, and we put them to sleep with local anesthetics. And most importantly, what we do is we use a rigorous and often uncomfortable process of physical therapy and occupational therapy to retrain the nerves in the nervous system to respond normally to the activities and sensory experiences that are part of everyday life. And we support all of that with an intensive psychotherapy program to address the despondency, despair, and depression that always accompanies severe chronic pain. It's successful, as you can see from this video of Chandler, who two months after we first met her is now doing a backflip and I had lunch with her yesterday because she's a college student <laughs> studying dance at Long Beach here, and she's doing absolutely fantastic. But the future is actually even brighter. The future holds the promise that new drugs will be developed that are not symptom-modifying drugs that simply mask the problem, as we have now, but that will be disease-modifying drugs that will actually go right to the root of the problem and attack those glial cells or those pernicious proteins that the glial cells elaborate that spill over and cause this central nervous system wind-up or plasticity that so is capable of distorting and amplifying the sensory experience that we call pain. So that I have hope that in the future, the prophetic words of George Carlin will be realized, who said, my philosophy no pain, no pain. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is the titanic battle between these two approaches. This is the Ali Frazier of motivation, right? This is the thrilla in Manila, all right? Intrinsic motivators versus extrinsic motivators. Uh, autonomy, mastery, and purpose versus carrots and sticks. And who wins? Intrinsic motivation, autonomy, mastery, and purpose in a knockout. Let me wrap up. There's a mismatch between what science knows and what business does, and here's what science knows. One, those 20th century rewards, those motivators we think are the natural part of business, do work, but only in a surprisingly narrow band of circumstances. Two, those if-then rewards often destroy creativity. Three, the secret to high performance isn't rewards and punishments, but that unseen intrinsic drive, the drive to do things for their own sake, the drive to do things because they matter. And here's the best part. Here's the best part. We already know this. The science confirms what we know in our hearts. So if we repair this mismatch between what science knows and what business does, if we bring our motivation, notions of motivation, into the 21st century, if we get past this lazy, dangerous ideology of carrots and sticks, we can strengthen our businesses, we can solve a lot of those candle problems, and maybe, 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 we can change the world. So we thought we would start writing a brand new chapter of mobility. Let me now introduce you to Elex that is worn by Amanda Boxtel that 19 years ago was spinal injured and as a result of that she has not been able to walk for 19 years. I was 24 years old and at the top of my game when a freak somersault while downhill skiing paralyzed me. In a split second, I lost all sensation and movement below my pelvis. Not long afterwards, a doctor strode into my hospital room and he said, Amanda, you'll never walk again. And that was 19 years ago. He robbed every ounce of hope from my being. Adaptive technology has since enabled me to learn how to downhill ski again, to rock climb and even hand cycle, but nothing 
has been invented that enables me to walk until now. Thank you. <laughs>